Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video we're going to work on evaluating a definite integral, but we're going to do it by reversing the variable. This is a very interesting technique, but you can think of your variable like x here as say incrementing over certain values that come from our bounds in our integral. So something like this, I might have x going over the values of 0 through 4. But after a substitution, they'll actually go over the values 4 through 0, the same values but just in the reverse order. But first let's go ahead and talk about some tips when using this technique so that you can better use it. Uh, first of all, when using this technique, you want to make the substitution u equals a minus x, where this a comes from your top bound in the variable. It also uses the fact that the variable in integration is really just a dummy variable. So watch for when I get to those examples how I really switch things all the way back to x. It's interesting, it doesn't feel like you should be allowed to do that, but you can. And lastly, you may need to combine your work with the original integral. So uh, um, we'll definitely do this in the examples as well. Um, I'll often keep track of the original in integral by using an i. All right, let's get into these examples and see exactly how this might work. So for the first of these integrals, I'm looking at the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of x all divided by the square root of x plus the square root of 4 minus x. So it has this form where, you know, I, I'm going from 0 to 4, but it's not really clear maybe where I should make a substitution. Well, we're going to make the substitution u is equal to 4 minus x. So pretty uh, uh, innocent looking one. Uh, of course, we want to run this through and see exactly what we need to substitute for the dx. So we'll take the derivative of both sides here, and the derivative of a negative x is just a negative 1. All right, to make this a little bit easier, we'll solve for the du, get that all by itself, by multiplying by the dx, dividing by negative 1. So that'll give us a negative du is equal to dx. Now, uh, a couple more things we want to do in this is... We can tell that this 4 minus x piece is going to become our u, but to, in order to swap out these x's, we also want to solve this equation for x. So I'm going to add x over here, subtract u over here, and this will give me x is equal to 4 minus u. All right, that all looks pretty good. Uh, these are definite integrals, which means we probably want to swap out our bounds as well. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of work over here. So u equals 4 minus... We'll go ahead and plug in our bounds. So when x is equal to 4, it looks like our new u bound will be 4 minus 4, which is 0. All right, what about that bottom bound? Well, I'll be using 4 minus bottom bound is 0. So get u equals 4 minus 0, so the bottom bound will now be 4. All right, so we have how we're going to substitute out our variables, our dx, and we have our new bounds. Let's see exactly what we get out of this thing. All right, so this is equal to, I'll write down our integral, and uh, let's go ahead and start off with those new bounds. So when u is equal to 4, or when x is equal to 4, u is equal to 0, and vice versa. And you can really see how we are reversing the variable now. Now it's going from 4 to 0. All right, on to the inside here. What do we get for the top? Uh, the top will have a square root of x, but we'll use this 4 minus u to swap that out. So 4 minus u. Onto the bottom, we have a square root of, uh, let's go ahead and put the 4 minus u in for that x, 4 minus u. And one more square root to take care of. This one matches what I was substituting out anyway, so this will just be a u. All right, and let's see, we've got a dx on the end. This will become a negative 1 multiplied by a du. So a lot's going on in our integral right now. It doesn't look like we've simplified too much, uh, but let's see what we can do with this thing. First of all, since I have a negative 1, I can go ahead and pull that out front of my integral symbol. But, you know, if I want to reverse these uh, bounds, it would change the sign anyway. So let's go ahead and do that, 0 to 4, and that will actually take care of this negative 1. Not too bad. Uh, I don't see any other real changes at this point. Just really wanted to point out that we are uh, now changing the bounds so that takes care of the negative sign. So let's just go ahead and write everything back in here. So that looks pretty good. All right. Now, since u is a dummy variable, I could write this same exact integral and just put x's for all of my u pieces. This doesn't feel like you should be allowed to do this. I mean, we just had x in here just a second ago. But again, it's just a dummy variable. This is completely okay. 
square root of x dx. All right, so that's looking good. And now the really interesting part. So we've started off with this integral here, our original integral, which I'm going to call capital I. And we've done some substitutions, we've worked it and turned it into this brand new integral, but it really is the same integral. It's exactly the same, just in a different form. So to keep things a little bit more clear, imagine this. So here's our original integral, here's what we've made it equal to, and we're calling all of this I. So if I wanted to, let's say, add these two things together, since they are exactly the same, it'd be like I have two of my original integral, okay? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this integral plus this integral. Now, some things allow us to actually combine these two together. First of all, the bounds are over the same interval, so that's nice. Also, they have exactly the same denominator in the bottom, so we really can put these two integrals together, and they will be over the same denominator. So four minus x in the bottom. That all looks good. Uh, since, the, since the denominators are the same, we can go ahead and put the numerators together. Well, there's a four minus x, dx. So you can see when you put those two things together, you really just get this really nice integral where the top, the numerator, and the denominator are exactly the same. Which means they'll go ahead and cancel each other out, and you'll be left with just a one inside of your integral, which is really nice. So now we can really just focus on taking the antiderivative of that and seeing where it goes. Remember, this is all equal to two times our original integral. Let's see, the antiderivative of one, well, that will turn into just an x, and then we can go ahead and plug in our, in our bounds from four to zero. So let's see, four to zero, that'll just give us a four. Now, since we really want to know the value of our original inter, uh, integral, we'll go ahead and have to divide both sides of this by two. So dividing both sides by two, we'll get that uh, i, the original integral, is equal to two. Or if I just was really trying to be clear, here's the, uh, that original integral, the square root of x all over the square root of x uh, plus four minus x. Yep, there's the original one, dx. And through all of this work, we said it is equal to two. So it's a very interesting technique. You can see a lot of things are going on in there. Uh, let's do this one more time with an even trickier one just to make sure we have the technique down. If you want, you can go ahead and pause the video now and try this one out for yourself. So this integral goes from zero to pi, and it involves x sine of x divided by one plus cosine squared dx. So again, not very clear how substitution is even going to help us, but that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna say u is equal to pi minus x. So we take its derivative. And like before, we're just getting a negative one over here. No problem. And we'll go ahead and solve this for uh, dx. So move that negative one over, multiply by dx. We'll get a negative du equals dx. Very nice. Uh, now, as before, uh, a lot of the terms in here actually involve just a regular x. So go back up to here, solve this for x by adding x to both sides and subtracting that u. So will give us x equals pi minus u. Okay, very nice. Right, that's all looking uh, fantastic. We have some bounds here, but as you might expect, these are going to switch places because when I use an x, so pi minus pi, this will turn into just zero. And when I use zero, so pi minus zero, this will turn into pi. So my bounds are going to be the same, just in uh, a flipped over reversed order. All right, let's write down the brand new integral, see what this actually turns into. So we'll start off with our bounds. Yep, there they are from zero to pi. And now onto the inside. So we have all of these x's. We're gonna use this uh, pi minus u to go ahead and swap those pieces out. So pi minus u, that'll be the first piece there. And now we have a sine, sine of, again, the same thing, pi minus u. Pi minus u. Okay, so that's looking really good. Onto the bottom one plus cosine squared, and then there'll be another pi minus u. All right, excellent, that's all looking good. And let's see, what do we put on the end here? Not dx, we should put in a negative du. Let's go ahead and write that. So it's a negative du. All right, so it's looking a little bit more complicated, 
But like before, I have this negative sign over here. I can use it to reverse my bounds on the integral. And then we can move forward with this thing and not worry about that negative sign whatsoever. Uh, let's see, other things that we can do that are going to be really interesting is dealing with these sines of pi minus u and the cosine of pi minus u. These, we can essentially expand them out using a difference of angles formula. So let's carefully, carefully write what that is going to turn into. All right, if I'm dealing with the difference of two angles, then I'll deal with sine of pi cosine of u minus cosine of pi sine of u. So I'm really just expanding that entire thing out. All right, and we can do the same exact thing on the bottom. Now we use the difference of angles for our cosine. So cosine of pi, cosine of u, plus sine of pi, and sine of u. And this came from a cosine squared, so all of this was our cosine squared. All right, again, it's looking way more complicated, but there are some things in here that are going to simplify and allow us to move forward. Uh, stuff like sine of pi in here, that of course simplifies to just zero. Cosine of pi, that is equal to negative one. Cosine of pi, there's another negative one right there. And sine of pi, we already did that once before. Sure enough, it is still zero. All right, let's see what happens when the dust settles and where this thing goes. So our bounds, zero to pi, that's not changing. We still have this pi minus u piece out front. And now let's see what's going on in here. Zero multiplied by anything is zero, so that's gone. Negative times a negative will be a positive. So we'll actually just have a sine of u on top. Sine of u, done. On to the bottom. So we have one plus, let's see, uh, we have a negative and a cosine. So there's a negative cosine. Negative cosine of u. And zero times anything is zero, so that piece is gone, and all of this is still being squared, du. Of course, that negative sign is gone from us uh, reversing the order of our bounds. So this thing is looking a lot better already. Now we'll go ahead and treat this dummy variable as a dummy variable and replace all instances of it with just an x. So instead of pi minus u, I will say pi minus x. And sine of u is now going to be sine of x. On to the bottom, let's see if we can do a little bit of cleaning up. Uh, negative uh, squared would be a positive, so this will turn back into a cosine, and I'm replacing that u with an x, and there's our dx on the end. So it is very similar to our original integral, and like before, we're going to combine it with that original integral in a very unique way so that we can actually uh, move forward with this thing. But we've definitely done some manipulations through this uh, substitution, and uh, let's see where it goes. So this was our original integral, and through all that work, this is what we've turned it into. Uh, these things are equal, and I'm just calling this thing i. If we want to combine these two together, if we want to add this integral with this integral, I'll end up with two times my original integral, or two i. Uh, and of course, we are allowed to do this because the bounds are the same, and they have exactly the same denominator. So it's really just the numerators that we're going to worry about and how those are going to combine. So x sine of x comes from the first one, then I have a pi and a minus x, that comes from the second one. All right, all of that is over the original uh, denominator, so that's looking good, dx. And now let's see what we can do with this thing. Uh, well, fortunately for us, this x and sine of x that will actually cancel with a negative x sine of x over here as soon as we distribute through with this sine of x. So these two pieces are really gonna go away. We don't have to worry about those, which is excellent. Which means I'll just end up with a, a single sign on the top. So this will go from zero to pi, and we'll have a pi sine of x that comes from distributing all over one plus cosine of x squared dx. All right, so we're not done with this thing yet, but the integral is getting nicer and nicer as we continue to work on with it. One thing that I really wanna point out with this stage, uh, especially if you're comparing it to your original integral and why this is so much nicer, is that instead of having that x here, now we just have a nice constant of pi. So let's go ahead and see where we can go with this. 
So we still have twice our original integral. Now we've worked it to this stage. And let's see, from here, let's go ahead and take out that constant of pi. We really don't need that guy hanging around in there. So we'll just say this goes from zero to pi of sine of x all over one plus cosine squared of x. All right, so what should we do? Well, surprisingly enough, we can use another substitution here to continue moving forward. If I think of the bottom here, I could call that, uh, let's say w, and its derivative is a version of the top, it's a version of sine of x. So let's see where that takes us. So w is equal to cosine of x. All right, so if that's what we're going to use for our substitution, then we need to take its derivative, and the derivative of cosine goes to negative sine. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, solve this thing for dx by multiplying and then dividing over. So dw all over negative sine of x. This is all equal to dx. Okay, that gives us something to replace the back end there. Excellent. Uh, and of course, we need to uh, replace these bounds. So let's see. When w is equal to, uh, well, let's see. What will w equal when cosine is equal to pi? So cosine of pi. Uh, well, let's see, cosine of pi, that's a nice one, that's equal to negative 1, so there's our top bound. Let's see, what happens when it's equal to 0? Well, cosine of 0 is equal to 1, so there's our bottom bound, and now let's see where all the pieces end up. So we still have pi out front, but that's okay. Top bound is now negative 1, bottom bound is positive 1. I uh, haven't done anything with that sign yet, so I'll just go ahead and leave it on top, onto the bottom. We're taking that cosine, we're replacing it with w, and the w is still being squared, so w squared. dx now, this is dw all over minus sine of x. So excellent, this thing is getting better. Uh, we just need to clean it up a little bit, so let's see what we can do. Uh, the sine of x in the top will cancel with the sine of x in the bottom, so those two things are gone. I have a negative sign here, but if I reverse these bounds on my integral, then that will take care of the negative sign. I'll make it positive. So we'll do just that. We'll run it from negative one to one. Uh, the signs are canceled out. So this is one over one plus w squared dw. All right, now we're finally at a point where we can take the antiderivative. The, this should be a fairly common antiderivative to always have in your back pocket. The antiderivative of one over one plus w squared, that is our arctangent arctangent of w. And uh, going to evaluate this at 1 and negative 1. All right, so we are almost home free with this thing. Remember, this represents two of our original integral. Now I just have to evaluate it at 1 and negative 1 and see what we get. Uh, let's see. When we evaluate it arctangent at 1, this will give us a pi over 4. Nice. When we evaluate it at negative 1, it will give us a negative pi over 4. So we evaluate it here, subtract, evaluate it at the bottom one. That looks good. And now we just have to start combining things. So let's see, there's pi out front still. Uh, minus a minus will give us a plus, so we have 1 fourth plus a 1 fourth pi, or 2 fourths pi. Combining this, uh, let's see, those reduce into just a 1 half. And the pi's combined to give us a pi squared. All right, so if I really want my original integral all by itself, now I can divide both sides of this by 2. This will give us that our original integral is equal to pi squared all divided by 4. And in case you forgot what that original integral was, we were evaluating from 0 to pi of x sine of x all over 1 plus cosine squared. So all of this is equal to pi squared all divided by 4. So as you can see, it is a very interesting technique, uh, but it definitely helped us get through some very difficult integrals, and it's definitely a, a kind of a trick you want to keep in your back pocket for some very special instances. All right, that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. If you want to see some more of my videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.